Sonic, the heart of your system. Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru and today we are back with another GTX 1660 Ti review. You may remember for launch day we actually reviewed the MSI Gaming X model which actually proved to, it was a really good card, just the price premium it had at £310 meant as a 1660 Ti it was probably a little bit too expensive to actually fully recommend. The card we're looking at today however is from Gigabyte and this is their 1660 Ti OC6G. So at just £10 more than MSRP or £269, it actually still has a dual fan cooler and it also still comes factory overclocked with a rated boost clock of 1800 MHz. So if you are looking for a 1660 Ti, is this the one to go for? Well, we're going to start with a look at the design and you can probably already tell it's perhaps not the most exciting car to look at. It's pretty plain. It's got this matte black plastic shroud. There are a couple of grey accents, but overall it's not hugely exciting. The flip side of that though is of course that it's actually very colour neutral, so you won't have any issues with this in a colour coordinated build for instance. But like I said, not the most exciting to look at but that could definitely work in your favor if you have a color coordinated build. It's obviously a dual fan cooler as well. It's got two 90 millimeter fans on there. That's what Gigabyte calls its WinForce 2X cooler. And the interesting thing about these fans is that on top of the fact they have a fan stop mode so they won't spin when the card is under light loads, it's interesting that they actually both spin in different directions. So what that means is the left fan actually spins counterclockwise whereas the right fan spins clockwise. So Gigabyte says this really should just reduced uh, turbulence and thus improve kind of airflow pressure down on towards the heatsink itself but of course we're going to get to thermals later on in the review. One thing I do like about the card though when we're looking at the design and kind of the shroud is actually just how compact it is. I think Gigabyte's done a really good job to get a dual fan cooler actually in a form factor this small so it's only a dual slot card when you know we're used to seeing two and a half slot cards or bigger. And if we turn to look at the actual dimensions, it measures 225.65 millimeters by 122.02 by 40.5 millimeters. So it's not gonna be as small as some of the single fan 1660 Ti's we have seen, but really for a dual fan cooler, this should fit in pretty much any case on the market. So dimensions are a definite plus point for the OC6G. Other things to note about the design include the Gigabyte logo, this is printed on the front of the shroud, but usually where we would see some RGB lighting here, there's actually no uh, lighting on the card at all, not even just plain white LEDs, anything like that, just no lighting whatsoever, none of the logos are backlit. Um, this is might appeal to some of you, you know, obviously the RGB heathens out there are probably thinking, hallelujah, it's a card without RGB. Some of you are probably thinking, oh, it's a card without RGB. But really, I think it's just to meet the price point at £269. Gigabyte is clearly trying to make a kind of no frills card and keep the cost down as much as it can. That being said, there is still a backplate, so that hasn't been sacrificed. Uh, but interestingly, unlike a lot of the other backplates we see on other cards, which are made from metal, maybe they have some thermal pads on there to aid with heat dissipation, this backplate is actually made entirely from plastic and it doesn't actually contact the rear of the PCB directly. So it's not a tool for any cooling or any extra heat dissipation, anything like that. It's really just for the aesthetics and also, I guess, a bit of extra structural support for the card. Personally, I, I think it looks okay. It's quite plain, quite plain black. You've got the Gigabyte logo on there as well. And for me, I'd much prefer it over no backplate. It's just worth noting, like I said, it is plastic, so it's not gonna be doing anything for the heat dissipation on the back of the PCB. Other things to note then just quickly as well is the single 8-pin PCI power connector which is very standard for a 1660 Ti and then also standard are the display outputs. Here we have three display ports and then one HDMI which seems to be basically the new norm for a 1660 Ti. If we move on now to take the card apart, this only requires the removal of six screws from the back of the card and then we get a look at the PCB. So Gigabyte has still gone with a four plus two power phase design. So you've got the four phases for the GPU VRM and then two phases for the memory. That's the same actually what we saw from the MSI Gaming X. And again, now this is the second card I've seen with the same configuration. I guess that is gonna be quite standard for other 1660 Ti's. 
Other things to note as well about the PCB, we have memory from Micron, so it's six gigabytes of GDDR6 memory at 12 gigabits per second. And then also the die itself is labeled TU116. We know it's the TU116 GPU. And just a reminder as well, if you didn't already know, TU116 isn't actually binned into a and non-A chip, so it's just a single TU116, which could potentially lead to a bit more of the old silicon lottery where some chips will overclock better than others. But then again, manual overclocking is something we'll get to later on in the review. Moving on now to look at the heatsink. I was actually really quite surprised just how basic this is when I first took the card apart. It uses just a single copper heat pipe and actually the, um, the heatsink with the fans as well weighs less than 350 grams. So it really goes to show there's not much heft there at all. That single heatsink makes direct contact with the GPU die. It only measures six millimeters in diameter. Although you can see there is a surrounding cold plate to cool the VRAM chips. And there is also a separate smaller cold plate for the VRM. Uh, so yeah, very basic cooler. I will reserve judgment until we get to the thermal performance later on in the review. Uh, we do know TU116 isn't, you know, doesn't require that much of crazy cooling, but to me this looks very basic, so we're going to have to see how it does. Moving on now to our gaming performance, we're going to show you our 1080p charts here in this video. Uh, we did do, of course, 1440p and 4K testing, but you can find that over on our website, kitguru.net, and you can also find our full testing methodology over there as well. So then as for the performance, this is the second 1660 Ti we have reviewed. It's got a rated boost clock of 1800 megahertz, whereas the MSI Gaming X we reviewed on launch day has a rated boost clock of 1875 megahertz, so 75 megahertz faster than this gigabyte model. Even with that said though, with the charts up now, you guys can probably already tell the performance difference is pretty much non-existent. In actual fact, at 1080p, the biggest gap we saw between the two 1660Ti cards was actually just 1.2 FPS. So if you're playing the game, you're really not gonna notice the difference whatsoever. To put it another way, on average, this Gigabyte OC6G is just 1.4% slower than that factory overclocked Gaming X card from MSI. And bearing in mind that that MSI card does have a much increased price premium, you can clearly see that the value aspect of this Gigabyte card is much increased over the MSI as performance is basically the same. So what that means for the card is, speaking generally, it's very well suited to high refresh rate 1080p gaming. We saw some games hitting you know, almost up to the 100 FPS mark. And then at 1440p as well, you'll still get very solid frame rates, mostly probably just around the 50 FPS zone, although you could get that up to the 60 FPS mark with just the adjustment of a couple of image quality settings. But overall, very good performance for a 1660 Ti, and like we said, there's hardly anything in it between this card and the MSI. Giving you just one last comparison between this card and the Gaming X, we look at average clock speed under load. So this card actually averaged 1857 megahertz, which is actually 57 megahertz slower than the MSI Gaming X. So really not much between them. And then like we said in our benchmarks, that really equates to hardly any performance difference when we're playing our games. There was actually perhaps surprisingly hardly any difference when we come to our thermal testing as well. This Gigabyte OC6G, the GPU peaked at just 65 degrees. And I have to say, I was actually uh, really quite surprised by that considering really just quite how basic this card, the actual cooler is. Obviously it's hard to be too critical of it because actually you know, the proof is in the pudding. A peak of 65 degrees is great, but it just surprised me that for a cooler this basic compared to what we're used to be seeing from other cards, um, it's just really quite surprising and actually really quite impressive. The one potential downside to that impressive thermal performance is the acoustics. This uh, OC6G produced just over 43 decibels of noise, so it's definitely not a loud card. If you look at the chart, there's actually quite a few cards that are louder than it. It's definitely in the quieter half of our tested cards. The MSI is still about six decibels quieter though, so in comparison to that, the OC6G from Gigabyte is definitely more audible, but overall for a card like this, a, a card of this price, it's really not a big deal whatsoever. One area that has been improved over the MSI Gaming X though is power consumption. That is thanks to 
the lower clock speed, we actually saw this card, the total system with the card installed, draw 169 watts from the wall. So that is, I think, exactly 10 watts less than the Gaming X. So not a big difference, but it's actually slightly less than even GTX 1060. So considering how much faster 1660 Ti is over 1060, it really still does just show that Nvidia has the upper hand when it comes to power efficiency, and that Turing is another uh, leap forward again in terms of power efficiency. Now we come on to manual overclocking and our best result came with an extra 135 megahertz to the GPU core and we actually managed to add an extra 1000 megahertz to the memory which brings it back up to the 14 gigabits per second speed that we have seen on the other Turing, the other RTX cards so far. In terms of that clock speed though, the GPU clock speed, we saw that uh, overclock help it average 20, 27 megahertz, so over the two gigahertz figure. And that's actually faster than what we could achieve with the MSI Gaming X as well. So while a lot of it does come down to the silicon lottery, it does just go to show you don't necessarily need to be spending more money on the kind of beefier coolers to achieve the highest clock speeds. So not only did this overclock actually improve our Fire Strike score by almost 10%, our games actually saw a decent boost as well, particularly Shadow of the Tomb Raider where we gained an extra 8 FPS on average, which brings this OC60 right up to Founders Edition RTX 2060 levels. So for me that just goes to show that for any potential enthusiasts on a budget out there who are very happy to tinker, try and get the best overclock they can. If you can get a 1660 Ti, which can overclock to around the two gigahertz, maybe even slightly beyond, you really do make up pretty much all of the rasterized performance of an RTX 2060. So in that regard, I think 1660 Ti could definitely appeal to some users out there. This overclock, however, did come at the cost of a slightly hotter running card. So we saw the GPU peak at 69 degrees when we had our overclock running and noise levels as well moved up from 43 decibels up to 46 decibels. So still not terribly loud, but it's getting a little bit more audible. Power consumption did also rise as well, but it was still under the 200 watt mark. So for a 1660 Ti, bearing in mind it's performing pretty much the same as a 1070, but drawing less power, I'd say that is still a good result. So then to wrap up this review, I have to say on the surface, the Gigabyte 1660 Ti OC6G is probably quite a simple card. It's not the most feature packed. We haven't got really any RGB. The shroud is quite simple. The back plate is only made of plastic. And like we said, that cooler is actually really quite basic with just a single copper heat pipe. That being said though, as a GTX 1660 Ti that actually comes in at just 10 pounds more than the MSRP, so this will set you back 269 pounds, it's actually a really compelling option. That's because despite the relatively basic feature set, it actually performs really, really well even compared to MSI's own Gaming X model, which is about 40 pounds more expensive than this and is, relatively speaking, one of the high-end 1660 Ti cards. If we look at the actual in-game FPS, the differences are basically non-existent. It comes down to about 1% or so. So definitely when it comes to value, you are getting a much better overall deal if you go for the Gigabyte OC6G. There is still the fact that Vega 56 can currently be found for under 300 pounds. Overclockers is currently selling the Sapphire Pulse model that's still 279 pounds at the time of filming. So definitely from a raw performance perspective, that is gonna offer you better frame rates in most titles compared to a 1660 Ti, although then again, you do have to factor in the significantly increased power draw. However, I don't wanna focus on that too much because it is still a temporary deal. I don't know how long Vega 56 is gonna actually last. It's gonna be on offer for at that price. And when it goes up back up to its higher price point, it does become kind of a slightly different ball game. What we can say for now though, is that for any prospective GTX 1660 Ti buyers, Gigabyte has actually managed to do a really good job with its OC6G. Like we said, it is relatively basic, but the proof is in the pudding. It performs really, really well. And definitely if you are shopping for a card, something like this at a price much closer to MSRP is definitely gonna give you much better value than one of the higher priced kind of top end 1660 Ti's. So I'm Dominic Guru. This has been my review of the Gigabyte 1660 Ti OC 6G. If you like this video guys, you can leave us a thumbs up. Also drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about 1660 Ti. Would you buy Vega 56 instead? Or would you be more inclined to go for a car like this from Gigabyte, which does have the benefit of much lower power draw? 
You can also subscribe if you haven't already. We've also got a triple fan 1660 Ti coming from Gigabyte, so it'll be interesting to see how that compares to this dual fan. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any of our videos, you can also hit that little notification bell and that way you will just see our videos as soon as they are uploaded. That is it from me though guys, so like I said, I'm Dominic4KitGuru, I will see you in the next video.